Today we're gonna get the die-hard Oklahoma fan football preview and all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean oh. you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ. What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Today, we are dumping into the real preview, man. Yeah, I put up the 30-minute generic everybody's college football preview to see what everybody thinks. But if you're an OU fan, you know most of that information already. Now we're going to talk about some topics that only matter to diehard Oklahoma Sooner fans like this one. Is Austin Kendall going to exit after the 2018 season? Well, probably-ish, maybe. We know that Kyler Murray is going to play pro baseball at the end of the season regardless. But Austin Kendall could see more reps than not, depending on what the contract standards are like in Kyler Mayball's baseball contract. Like, if he takes so many hits to the head, I could see a provision in there that says you can't play him anymore. I can also see Austin Kendall saying, I need to be the guy in 2019 or I'm transferring because Tanner Mordecai is behind him and everybody knows Spencer Rattler is going to make some noise when he gets to campus and whether or not Austin Kendall wants to put up with all of that after sitting behind Baker Mayfield and sitting behind Kyler Murray, presumably. It would not surprise me to know that Austin Kendall and Austin Kendall's camp are keeping feelers out about other places that they might consider going, but you gotta believe that Austin Kendall needs to be assured he's basically gonna be the guy in 2019, or yeah, I could see him dipping, why not? He wants to play quarterback, and that's just in keeping with Oklahoma. We seem to have at least one quarterback go every three years or so. The next topic that I wanted to bring up was Trey Brown, or Trey Norwood at corner. Now you probably have four starters, and I'm gonna get to the other two in just a bit, but you really gotta think that Trey Brown is pushing Trey Norwood. Now, I also kinda like Trey Brown to play that nickel spot, and even some safety, because he's got that kind of body and he's got that kind of speed, and as another Tulsa Union kid, yeah, I would love to see him back there. And he's bigger than Trey Norwood. However, Trey Norwood has the starts, Trey Norwood has the experience, and Trey Norwood can get after guys. We saw it in the Rose Bowl. Matter of fact, that scoop and score doesn't matter unless Trey Norwood fights off being seven yards off the ball. Hello, Mike. And goes and makes the tackle. However, I like the depth that we have here. So could it be Trey Norwood? Could it be Trey Brown? I think it's going to be Trey Norwood going into two a days. But Trey Brown is going to push him, and I would not be surprised to see him starting come FAU. On the other side, we know that Parnell Motley's the guy. However, depending on how Jordan Parker looks coming back, Jordan Parker's going to push everybody. I mean, Jordan Parker was the guy until he got hurt, right? And I got to say, I like everything that's going on over there at that position because there's no reason to be bad at corner this year. None. Zero. It is the deepest position on the defense this year. And I expect to see all four of those guys get reps and all four of those guys get significant playing time in 2018 because they're just too good to keep them off the field. The next one is actually a reference to a Twitter poll that I pulled up earlier this month about who's going to be the alpha dog on the defense. The guys that I most likely thought were up for it were Parnell Motley, Buki, right? So the two corners, but also the linebackers, Kenneth Murray Jr. and Caleb Kelly. Now you already know, I love me some Kenneth Murray. I think K-9 is going to be a dog on this defense. I think with his size and his speed, and if it's true about him staying in the film room, and if it's true that that one year of experience has so much to do with how you will play as a true sophomore, and if it's true that we can expect great things out of a freshman All-American, then yeah, K-9's got to be the guy. However, Caleb Kelly's a five-star talent, and he's a guy that a few years back, you might have thought, yeah, he's the kind of guy that might actually get to jump out out of college football and into the league next year. But now that doesn't seem true unless he has a big year at the Will linebacker spot. However, last year he was playing a position that you could take off the field, right? This year he's playing the Will. He's playing Emmanuel Beal spot alongside Kenneth Murray. And I could fully expect Caleb Kelly to take over the defense in the way that we want somebody to, right? But also, it's K-9 at middle linebacker, and you want your middle linebacker to be your leader. So I think going into camp, they're going to look at K-9 to do it. However, if it ends up being Caleb Kelly, yeah, I can live with that too. I know folks are down on Parnell Motley for whatever reason, but I think y'all just sleeping on PM. I really do, because that dude's getting a minor in air traffic control. And if he has four picks in the first six games, remember, I told you so. On the other hand, I think in a few years, this is going to be Buki's team. I don't just mean the defense. I just mean period. It's going to be Buki's team. I think it's going to be Caleb Kelly's until he says otherwise, until he either relinquishes those duties to Buki or he just takes it over and everybody bows to K-9. In either case, I think between 
Kenneth Murray Jr. and Buki were going to be fine. And then the 2019 class gets here, and you know how excited I am about those guys. The next item that I wanted to bring to the diehard OU fan is, are we finally going to be good at special teams again? Because with the hiring of Shane Beamer, you got to think that Lincoln Riley has said, yes, we have to be better at special teams. Not because we've been bad, but because we ain't been good. We've left points on the boards. Every time you don't block a kick, every time you don't block a punt, Every time you go punt safe, every time you don't run one back, you got to believe we left the play out there. We left a big play out there. And games that were tight could have been wins if we got the special teams plays. I'm thinking about games like Iowa State. I'm thinking about games like Georgia. If we had great special teams, we go undefeated. Or at least that's what I think. On the other hand, I've missed Alex Ross for the first time in years. Because at the very least, Alex Ross could run one back. I We could count on that. Alex Ross was good to run one back. Now who's going to be good to run one back? Maybe it was Jeff Bidette last year, but we didn't see it. Maybe this year it'll be Marcellia Sutton. Maybe CeeDee Lamb. Maybe you put Hollywood Brown back there and let him go berserk. Either way, I'm hoping that the hiring of Shane Beamer and the dedicated two special team coaches can figure something out to where special teams is no longer just a thing we do because it's a part of the game. It's a thing we do because we're good at it. Bring some more trick plays. Bring some more Grant Botham throwing the blade to money cut. I want more of that. Beamer ball, come to Oklahoma. Next thing I wanted to bring up for the diehard Oklahoma fan is, is Neville Gallimore going to make the jump now? Now, depending on who you talk to, it's, it's a head game with him. Because, you know, he flat out got benched. But, but, he's moved to the nose. We know that it's going to be him. It's going to be Q Overton. It's going to be Imani Bledsoe. Kenneth Mann is my dude to come on to be the breakout guy on that defensive line. But Neville Gallimore needs to make this defensive line his. He needs to be the guy. Ruffin, go talk to him. Do whatever you got to do because that guy has too much skill, too much talent to not be a force on the defensive line in the Big 12. Just too much. I want him to make the leap and I want him to make it in a big way. The next thing that I want to bring up for the diehard Oklahoma fan is who the hell is playing safety this year, man? Look, Robert Barnes is my guy to play strong safety. I don't necessarily want him playing free safety. I want strong Robert Barnes and Ryan Jones back there playing some strong safety. I know Ryan Jones has been moved to the strong side linebacker spot, but I want a Cam Chancellor player in that role. And if it's not Ryan Jones, it better be Robert Barnes. I like both of those guys to come down, make tackles, and can cover up guys. At free safety, I don't really know. I know Khalil Houghton has the most senior leadership, so he gets the nod going into camp. But who knows with Chance Sylvie blowing out his Achilles, man. We don't really know. Pat Fields looked good in the spring game. But if you want to say that we're thin at any place... It have to be the safety spots because I believe in Chance Sylvie, but it's 50-50 with that Achilles injury. I believe in Robert Barnes. I believe in Justin Broyles. I think Justin Broyles is going to get a chance to play some safety because he looked good in the spring game, right? And if he, if we're so stacked at corner, why not move him to the nickel spot over there with Buki? Why not move him over to the strong safety spot, free safety spot, see where he fits in? So I, we're thin there, but we're thin there in the terms of experience, not in terms of bodies. Still, it's going to be really interesting to try to figure out who of all of those players is going to make those two positions theirs. And finally, speaking of positions, what the hell defensive scheme are we running this year, Mike? Is it a 3-4? Is it a 4-2-5? It is, your, is it your hybrid version of a 3-4-2-5? I don't know, but I need you to figure it out. I want four men on a line of scrimmage like we saw during the spring game. I want Kenneth Murray and Caleb Kelly on the field at all times. I want five DBs on the field. I know what that looks like. Looks like 4 to 5 to me. But with the, with, with the personnel that we have and the absolute level of talent on this football team now, man, make it work. If Deshaun White needs to start right away, start him. I know you're probably going to start Buki. But I want five defensive backs in a league where everybody plays a shotgun, dude. Come on now. This is the year. Mike, this is the year. This is your year, okay? It has to be your year. It has to be your because you got a $30,000 raise for bringing in a pretty good recruiting class because it sure as heck wasn't for you in the Rose Bowl. All right, that's it for me. Doses. <laughs>